The floor cutoff has now passed, meaning all bills except for those necessary to implement the budget must have passed from their house of origin or they're considered dead for the year. You had four bills that survived and went to the Senate. Tell us about them. All right, you know, this is a very exciting past two weeks working out on the floor and I was actually able to get these four bills out. House Bill 1052 is something that I'm very happy to bring because it involves our active duty military members over at Whidbey Island and down at Naval Station Everett. And it involves early course registration for the spouses of our active duty military members. So this is a big deal for our military folks to give them some stability within their schedules. And I'm very happy to get that bill out. The second bill was one of three of my transportation reform bills. It's House Bill 1850. And this bill would exempt transportation maintenance projects from local review. It'll help really speed up the permitting process just for basic maintenance issues within our transportation system. And the third is House Bill 1851. And this bill is in regard to locally owned city and county owned bridges that have been structurally deficient. And it directs the Department of Ecology in some additional rule writing that will benefit that permitting process, speed it up and cost those local governments less money to replace their bridges. Lastly was House Bill 1695, and this was a bill that I was really happy to partner with Representative Cliburn, who's the chair of the House Transportation Committee. And this bill would direct the Department of Transportation and our larger counties and cities in the state to use more recycled concrete and aggregate products and transportation projects. This is a great bill for our environment and it's going to save us a lot of money in the in the long run as well. So I was really happy to get that package of four bills off the House floor. And as we move on down the road, those bills will be introduced over in the Senate now. I'll be over there testifying in the Senate committee hearings and making sure these bills get all the way up to the governor for signatures. Any disappointments? Yeah, there was one particular bill that I was very disappointed that didn't get through because this came from a constituent family over on South Woodby Island. That was House Bill 1723, and it regarded the use of booking photos and ensuring that the booking photos for suspects of crimes that have been booked into the jail are part of the public jail register. So, you know, this is a good peace of mind bill for victims of crimes, and I'm, and I'm really sorry that that didn't get through, but unfortunately it was a bill that the Speaker of the House just uh, didn't really uh, approve of and he refused to bring it to the floor. But I'm going to keep working that issue and hopefully in the future I can come up with a version that, uh, that is uh, uh, amenable to the other side of the aisle. Two bills that did make it out of the House may have some big impacts on your local businesses. Can you talk about the minimum wage bill and the sick and safe leave bill? Oh yeah, my pleasure. You know, House Bill 1355, that's the minimum wage bill and it would raise minimum wage in the state of Washington up to $12 over the next four years. And what we're really concerned with is that raising the minimum wage doesn't really reduce or affect the level of poverty in our state. It doesn't necessarily stimulate the economy. It doesn't address the issue of income inequality, which is an issue in our state. Now, we have studies available that show that increasing the minimum wage actually increases poverty levels, not decreases. And nearly all the studies show that raising minimum wage reduces employment. And what we're really concerned about there are our low wage workers and our teenage workers because teenage unemployment in Washington state is at very high levels and we're among the highest unemployment levels for teenage workers in the whole country. So I'm concerned that this bill would actually make that problem even worse. Another thing that people don't really think about is that the state of Washington is actually the largest employer of minimum wage workers. So in the end, this would end up costing the state billions of dollars to put into place. So we're really very concerned about that bill and that's why I voted no. The second bill that we talked about out there was House Bill 1356. And that's in regard to mandatory sick and safe leave. And we have some real concerns with that bill as well because of the costs to the employer and the bureaucracy that it adds to just being a business owner. So House Bill 1356 requires mandatory sick and safe leave for employers over four employees. And it really kind of discriminates against those small business owners. Most large business owners already have sick leave. So it's not a fair apples to apples comparison between those two sizes of employers. So we're just afraid that they would be disproportionately impacted by that. And it would possibly eliminate hours for many employees, and it would potentially eliminate other benefits that the employees already receive. So we're, we're very concerned about that. If people want more information about these or other bills, 
what can they do? You can certainly call my office anytime you like. All my contact information is here on, on the screen in front of you. Or you can, if you have questions regarding the bill specifically and don't mind reading the bills yourself, you can go on the internet to the legislative website and that's www.leg.wa.gov. Um, but of course, anytime, shoot me an email and I'd be happy to get back to you.